Tarkovatko Anna Kostopra Researcher in uh, Estonian School in Rakhalti uh, University in Finland? And uh, yeah, I will tell you about the quantum nanoplasmics in this talk and uh, also how, how we apply electronic structure calculations for nanoplasmic phenomena but also classical electrodynamics methods. And I uh, will also show some results and uh, methods that can be used to combine these in single calculations. So the uh, two is uh, also very much involved in this project and uh, I guess he's uh, about to finish his uh, diploma thesis soon about the implementation of uh, near field enhancement calculations for, for GPO and uh, he will get the floor for a few minutes at the end of the talk to describe his, his uh, uh, work better. And uh, I should also thank some other people that, that have been uh, helping me. So, you see, you see, and Mark, Mark Fusco from Alba University, and Claude Lehtovar, and you see, Dr. Parker from the University of Utah, that they, they uh, helped me in the interpreting some of the results that I'm so so, uh, uh, just briefly, let's say, but, but I'll tell you about the other few of the result review of, of what, what on the platform of applications. But then I'll uh, tell you about the computational approaches that one can use for the simulating the plasmons. So, this can be uh, categorized as classical methods and quantum methods. And, and uh, then there are also some, some different methods that use some information from both of these. Then I will describe our new development. So this is really a core development project. So uh, I will want to describe the implementation and some uh, preliminary results and, and demonstrations of the methods. Uh, so uh, plasmonics is a, a nice uh, energy field in science and technology, uh, but it's, it's not so uh, that, that new in the sense because in the sense that uh, people have used the localized surface plasmas in uh, spec spectroscopy since the 70s when it was observed that uh, uh, optical Raman scattering was uh, cross sections were enormously enhanced in the cases where the molecules that were studied were on top of rough uh, metallic surfaces. And the reason was that uh, when, when you excite or when the light interacts with the metal, uh, the, there are localized surface plasmas excited in the in these uh, salt tips. This means that there are there is a collective charge oscillation uh, in these nanoscale structures, and and light some in some sense gets confined in these structures, and it creates a very strong near fields around these the structures, these tips. And the molecules that are in the present in, in the in this near field, then of course. Feel uh, uh, enhanced or interact more strongly with, with external light, and that's why you get enhanced gamma scattering signals, enhanced absorption, and enhanced dwarfness. And this has uh, uh, this has then been used not only in science but also for, for some uh, sensor applications. Uh, and and also the fact that you can really confine light in the nanoscale structures makes it possible to copy different kinds of wavelengths and uh, nano antennas from the nanoscale metallic materials. And one interesting uh, bit of applications is, is this uh, the, is the use of uh, using the hotspots uh, that are generated around the tips, this the strong strong near fields they keep the surroundings of the <coughs> nanostructures and and that, that can be used in, in, for example, medical applications, cancer, traffic, but all, and also presentations. So that can be used to, for water purification. So this is in the work of now in our group, Ross University. So uh, now if, if you want to design nanoplasmic materials, uh, there are different approaches, computational approaches. So if the structures are large enough, one can use classical electrodynamics. So the Maxwell equation <coughs> for the geometry and uh, materials in hand. At the other end, other end you, if the structures are 
a really small one has to use quantum mechanical methods. And now, now if you have some intermediate scale system, you, you have to uh, do some approximations uh, for the quantum calculations to, so that you can do larger scale calculations. Or, or you, you have to modify the Maxwell equations somehow to get, get the quantum effects there. And one typical uh, approximation or is not really approximately, but, but one thing that one can do is, is to use the non-local response instead of the local permittivity. When, when solving the Maxwell equation for the electric and magnetic fields, this means that the, uh, the electric field, or the, yeah, the electrons at one point will uh, also be the electric field at other points. This is uh, one mechanical but often one, one has cases where where part of the system is, is really large, but it interacts with, with small, uh, small of single molecules, for example. And in that, the those cases, one really needs these different methods so that part of the system is described quantum mechanically and part is described uh, classically. So the optimal thing would be to have a method that can <coughs> jump from one, one level to another. And this is where we are aiming. So then, uh, so think about the work that other research groups have, have done for the classroom. It's a typical system that people have studied is, is uh, two metallic uh, spheres uh, that, that uh, interact. They are, they are small and they are separated by a small gap. And, and then you can see, do one mechanical or classical calculation to see how the, also the plasma resonance seen here in the photoabsorption spectrum shifts in energy and changes its intensity as the distance is, is changed. And uh, one uh, interesting figure and often studied figure is this near field enhancement at the gap regime between the spheres. You can see that there is a really, really strong uh, electric field present in this gap. And uh, the quantum particle <coughs> predictions to our last group uh, uh, this is a few years ago. They thought that if the spheres are distant enough, uh, then the quantum and classical simulations uh, are clean. But when, when the spheres are brought closer together, the electrons can tunnel from one particle to, to another, and this will change the plasmic properties. So in this case, the one, one really has to use one mechanical method. Um, you can see this pretty well, but, uh, but people are now also uh, going towards uh, plasmonic uh, simulation for atomic scale structures. And in the recent work, they used the uh, independent time funding method to study these gap, gaps compared to cluster electrodynamics results and so some, some results. So the concept of plasmon in the in a molecular system, the really small systems is actually not so clear. In bulk of metals, it's, it's, the plasma is defined as zero of the electric function, but uh, for <coughs> molecular systems, it's not so clear. And uh, one of the most, uh, one phase, uh, most frequently cited work was the uh, Jan's previous focus, uh, a paper from 2007 where, where uh, they studied the uh, uh, absorption spectrum of sodium chains as a function of the chain length. And, uh, and uh, this, this, we reproduced these calculations with uh, Chipo, so these are, these are our Thomas's uh, calculations. And uh, we got good agreement and, and analyzed the same way as the student uh, the, the excitations here. So you can see this uh, plasmic feature. Here and you can calculate it. The such state fluctuations are associated with the transitions and all the other transitions as well. And, uh, and after that, there were many papers discussing if, if these are really plasmons or not. And uh, I think uh, the, this, this year there was an well, interesting paper which uh, really, to, in, in my opinion, really settled this, uh, this question and, and so that. 
yes, these, these are really plus point in, in the sense that one can expect. Uh, for the, the best demonstration of this was, was that when you scale electron electron interaction with it, uh, in the, for the dynamic electron electron interaction, uh, then these plus point peaks uh, behave differently as a function of the scaling uh, parameter and the single part of the excitations. So I'm not going very deep into the details of the calculus and methods. But like I said, PDDFT has been used for this and also classical electro uh, dynamic stimulations. And in both cases, one can use the real space ap approaches. And uh, that's why we also use Chipo here. So the idea is to propagate the system in time. First, perturb the system with external field and then let the system evolve in time, record the dipole moment, and uh, further transform it to get the photo <coughs> can see the cosmic resonances. Uh, actually, in classical electrodynamics, there is a somewhat similar method called final difference time domain technique. And uh, in that, that, uh, that method, you also have the uh, uniformly spaced grid points where you solve the master equals if you solve electric from non electric fields that fits at this grid points and you propagate this in time. And, uh, and you can use this for very different kind of systems. For example, to study about it, what happens when light lightning strikes an airplane or, or but also for these uh, nanoscale systems. And uh, yeah, so these are really, really similar methods in, in many sense. And that's why we are thinking that we should try to combine these, these methods in, in some way. Um, okay. Uh, but first, uh, maybe I will tell you about also this, uh, uh, what, what you can do with the TDDFD method. And so, like I, like I said, you can uh, calculate the such space, the factors and associated with each transition, which means that you can also calculate the potential that this factor in such generates around the the nanowires in this case or molecular whatever your system is. And when you know the potential you can also calculate the electric field. And this is what Thomas has been now working on and you soon so so the uh, implementation in more detail, but uh, we can now really use uh, the uh TDDF the uh, cheap of TDDFT modules to calculate the near field distributions. Around this structure, so this is for the wire. So you can see that there is uh, electric fields very close to the atom. This is very strong. Mm, okay, so uh, but then, then considering this fast uh, electrodynamics implementation, uh, the or actual FTD finite difference time domain method is, is quite cumbersome. You have to deal with the quite complicated boundary conditions. So uh, it's, it's really, uh, uh, or it's this uh, lot of uh, effort to implement that kind of things. And, and, but but there, there, is a, there are also approximations to, to the FDD equations. Uh, and, and one good approximation is the quasi-static quasi approximation for the Maxwell equations. It's just that we don't, uh, you only care about the longitudinal electric field. And this is a good approximation for small systems where you don't care about the far field properties uh, and you only want to see the near field. So the idea is, is to describe the classical material as, as Lorentzian uh, oscillators. So at this point, you grid point, you associate a set of Lorentzian oscillators and the classical charge density that you can uh, calculate from just polarization and polarization current and uh, one can derive the uh, time, time propagation equations for, for this and, and implement them in, in grid space code. And this is what the, this, uh, this class, Kumar and no, Neuhauser's group did and they thought that for small systems they, they get quite a good agreement with the full maximum equations. 
And they also thought that it's possible to combine it with PDDF calculations, although this was only done for one week. <coughs> but uh, we implemented this in, in GPO, so we can do also 3D calculations with this technique, so um, we can really now do larger scale calculations for the classical uh, electrodynamics. Excuse me, is that, this is a local direction function, that means it's just static on in space? So if yeah. the point has a, a it's not a yeah. the epsilon minus hour minus half point. Yeah, at this point you have the permittivity. Uh, is it it's a local function, function in, in real space? Correct. Right. The the, the direction function is should be a thousand function in real space. Function. In real space. So it's, it's it only is a function it's only an icon of R and R R and R prime. Is that correct? It's a function of R. You can add also non-locality with the... Uh, you can, yeah, that was my... Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. but, but this is not done yet. So, uh, so the idea is really to propagate the polarization and polarization currents and then solve the uh, uh, classical charge densities and the electric fields from, from them. And then, uh, here you also get the Boston equation as, as uh, Yeah. 
And then after the time propagation, we can use this other of these equations to get the true industrial density. Uh, the Casino method. So Casino method is uh, linear response to the DFT formulation target in frequency space. And uh, we get induced density from this complicated grouping equation, but there are no not really any complication there, so we have a particle of basis. For example, here the pair density where we need to take into account, account the PAW corrections or compensation charges. And here the coefficients are given by the Cassidy eigenvalue equation, which is already solved here in uh, G4. Now, one complication here is this, uh, that the Casida method has built in an assumption of infinite lifetime, so we need to modify this first term a little so that we get non-divergent non induced density from Casida method. And uh, this whole thing can be very just a single equation, so this is implement, implemented as a post-processing step because of this one this are uh, it's available than this casino so so now I briefly saw some examples so this is for very small sodium cluster which has uh, absorbed of spectrum so here both in time propagation and casino methods so this spectra are pretty well as we already expect And uh, if we convert the induced density calculated in both methods, we see that they actually really well. And uh, for the field examples, uh, if we have two of these clusters and look what kind of fields we have, so for example, this may be, uh, we see that there are forms hotspot, so strong electric field between the uh, clusters. And if we look at other excitations, we see that they are quite different. These uh, near fields that we get. And uh, this is my part of the talk, and now I let you say concluding remarks. Okay, so it's not it's more to say it's that that's Okay, that's all. So, good day. Thank you for your time. So, we have time for a few questions. Yeah. Um, so, one thing we have tried, and very nice work. I, I think we would, we would also like to try this to try this out at some point. Um, one thing we have tried is to take the dielectric function of a, of a quantum system and, and diagonalize it to find the uh, sort of natural plasma modes of this, of this structure. Would it be possible with your implementation to, to do the same thing, but including the environment somehow, to get a, a total dielectric function for the quantum system, which is calculated at the nature, uh, plus the classical environment, or is it... Yeah. Um, what? So, so what would be the dielectric function of this? Um, so you model the dielectric function of the classical environment yes. using a group model or something? Yes. Yeah. So it's the, just a right, just the bulk of the dielectric function that we use. Yeah. I know. I think we have to discuss it again. It sounds like. Do you have a question? Yes. Uh, how is it with the, with the grid spacing? So do the grids fit uh, the needs for the classical region and the, the quantum region? They are the same. Grid spacing is the same for both in, in the current implementation. And that's good for, for the calculation, so to say. Or, or yeah, I, I just said it's not naive idea that the, the classic needs uh, does not need that sparse grid. Or yeah. The classic would be much faster, that's right, so that they would really be able to scale better, so you would have different 
is based for the classical part and the more length for the quantum part, but this is not done. It's left for optimization for the whole answer as it says it.